Joining us on the line is Chris Sprouls, Republican legislator, attorney, and speaker of the Florida House of Representatives. And of course, one of the sponsors of the Florida Parental Rights and Education Bill. Chris, thanks so much for joining the show. Great to talk to you. Hey, Ben, great to be back with you. So first of all, congratulations on that bill being signed into law. The not don't say gay bill because it has nothing to do with that. Uh, I have to congratulate you, the Florida House of Representatives, Governor DeSantis, on what has to be the greatest troll job of all time when it comes to the left, because somehow you've gotten the entire left to embrace the position that sexually indoctrinating kindergartners is a fundamental good. Yeah, it's, it's really quite amazing. I think you've done a great job uh, on your show talking about how ridiculous their, their assertions are about don't say gay. It's not in the bill. It's only four pages long. Clearly, they didn't bother to read it. Um, but I've also kind of taken this point. I think you've said this, Ben. Not only are they taking the position that we should educate children in, who are five and six years old about transgenderism, but now they've engaged in what is typical sort of acts of political terrorism uh, and saying that if you, if you are, are not okay with that and you don't validate that worldview, you know, somehow you're, you're a crazy bigot. So they've sort of been all over the map on this thing, uh, but where they aren't is where the vast majority of Americans are, which is they don't want this in, in their classrooms in, in K through third grade. I mean, it is, it's, it's political malpractice. I mean, every poll shows widespread support for the bill, particularly among parents. I mean, these, these polls are showing that the bills are popular among Americans more broadly, but the chief groups that are motivated to vote on, on issues like this are people with kids. And people with kids are overwhelmingly in support of bills like this. And yet you have corporations like Disney whose entire consumer base is parents. I mean, it is people like me who consume Encanto on behalf of their kids and, and pick up a Disney Plus subscription so that their kids can watch Pinocchio. It's, that, that, is, that is families like mine. And if Disney continues to not only pump out propaganda about how traditional mores are, are evil, but if they actively attempt to press left-wing social messaging into their films, I'm just not going to consume their content. I think a lot of Americans feel the same way. No, I totally agree. As a parent, I feel the same way. And But just look at, here's a global company like Disney, uh, who's really brought to their knees by a group of advocates who are purporting something is in the bill that's not in the bill. And again, we go back to what they're saying to Disney is, if you don't publicly validate our worldview, no matter how ridiculous, even if it includes you know, indoctrinating children in first grade about transgenderism, you know, then we're going to cancel you. And immediately Disney reacts. They put out a, just a totally ridiculous statement yesterday as they're twisting themselves into a pretzel um, to try to talk about this bill uh, in a way that doesn't make sense at all. And to your point about uh, polls, you know, the Daily Wire did a great poll on this issue. There was another poll that came out the other day for Democrat primary voters and said that de a majority of Democrat primary voters, you know, said that, you shouldn't be teaching these topics in, in K through third grade. And listen, if you're the left and you're losing Democrat primary voters, not only are you not on the, the, the uh, mainstream, you're just a radical. It, it really is an impressive showing of stupidity by the left. It, it also, just political malpractice, when you somehow are trying to label Republicans plutocrats, but at the same time, it's Disney that is now at war with parents, and you're on the side of Disney, it's very difficult to make the case that, that you are not the plutocrats. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's no question about that. What I think has been uh, great, though, to your point, is that parents have never been more engaged than they are right now at this time, I think, in our country's history on their children's education. And they are reacting with vitriol when, when somebody says, hey, you know, you shouldn't be in charge. It should be the bureaucrats or it should be corporate, corporate entities like Disney who decide what's good and appropriate content for your kids. The vast majority of Americans know exactly what is appropriate for their kids, because as you know, Ben, being a parent, we do that a thousand times a day as parents. We curate what they're watching on TV, what they're listening to, what the way we talk around them. Uh, the idea that we're not going to do that when we drop them off um, for, for school during the seven hour day is totally ridiculous. And no matter what Disney or the left say, um, you know, we're going to push back on. And I think we've seen parents uh, react in a very strong and positive way. Now, Chris, we're speaking with Chris Browse. He's the speaker of the Florida House of Representatives. Florida, of course, just signed into law the Parental Rights and Education Bill. So, Chris, Disney puts out all these statements. Have they made any actual overt threats? I mean, they, they've sunk billions of dollars into Disney World. It's, it's their single biggest property in terms of footprint, uh, probably in terms of revenue as well. Uh, so, I mean, when, when they make these sorts of threats, there's not any serious threat that Disney is actually going to pull Disney World out, like physically pull it out of Florida and relocate it to Cape Browns, Oregon or something. Yeah, I would say to them, good luck. Uh, I, I don't think there's any 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 realistic view that they could do that. I think what they said yesterday is, oh, we're going to work to overturn it. I mean, it's your typical sort of corporate, you know, nonsense that that people say. 
Uh, but look, I, I'd say this. We've reacted this way before uh, as the legislature, Ben. You remember last year when we took up um, the, the Protect Women's Sports Act to push back on you know, boys playing against girls in women's sports. That was before we saw Thomas you know, swimming and winning the national championship in the NCAA. And while we were taking up that bill, the NCAA came out and said they were going to boycott any states um, who took up legislation. Well, guess what? We took it up. We passed it. We also said to our universities in the bill, if you... Uh, if, if the NCAA boycotts the state of Florida, then our universities cannot be members of the NCAA. And, I, and I've said this before, but how many events has the NCAA canceled, postponed, or boycotted in the state of Florida? Zero. Um, it's, it's a false threat. And I think once you put punch the bully in the face, they stop making threats. Yeah, Chris, I mean, this is one of the things I think that, that is so telling is for the, the left, the media, they keep saying over and over that, you know, this is a, Florida is apparently some sort of dystopian authoritarian hellscape. And yet, People just keep coming here. I mean, the, Florida is is maybe the fastest growing state in the country at this point. Florida's picked up population during the pandemic like nobody's business, including, of course, my family and part of my company. And, you know, Florida is, for, for all the talk about how Ron DeSantis is, is doing things that are wildly off the beaten track and how dare he, in, in every poll against Democrats, he moved from a governor who's elected by about 30,000 votes over Andrew Gillum to a governor who's going to win re-election by an extraordinarily large margin. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, we've we've led the nation in domestic migration for years. Um, in a post-COVID world where I feel like the contrast of Florida versus the rest of the country became more stark, uh, people started realizing what we've known all along, which is Florida is a destination for freedom. People who want to live their lives, raise their families, start their businesses, and thrive here. And and people are flocking here. And I think when we do bills like this, the message that we send is that we are on the side of the people who live here. We are on the side of the parents. We are on the side of the kids. We are not on the side. Of, of corporations, the corporate media or the left. And when it comes to issues of truth and when it comes to issues of facts, we will not surrender truth to facts to an angry mob on Twitter. Well, that is Chris Sprouls. He is the Speaker of the Florida House of Representatives. Again, congratulations on the passage of the Parental Rights and Education Bill. And thanks for standing up for parents in this state. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it.